Clarence, New York is a quaint historical town just 14 miles northeast of Buffalo. Comprised of dairy farms, cornfields, a few neighborhoods, and a population of less than 2,000 people, it has an almost Midwestern feel. Thomas Montgomery lived in a modest home on Grand Boulevard and worked at the power tool manufacturing giant Dynabraid Inc. As he was clocking out of his shift one afternoon, his coworkers were standing around discussing playing online poker later that night. They invited Thomas to join them. Thomas worked long hours and his usual nightly routine was to watch some TV and then fall asleep. But that night, he made the very fateful decision to join them. After dinner, Thomas logged onto the gaming site Pogo.com, and before beginning his game of poker, he entered one of the team chat rooms under the username Marine Sniper 1000. He chatted with a few people about how he was an 18-year-old Marine and was preparing for deployment to Iraq. Almost immediately, a message popped up from a user named Tall Hot Blonde. The two hit it off immediately and started chatting online every night. Tall Hot Blonde revealed that her real name was Jessie and that she was a 17-year-old senior in high school in Oak Hill, West Virginia. She sent Thomas a picture of herself and she looked exactly like her username implied. She was tall and had long blonde hair and tan skin. Thomas thought she was one of the most beautiful girls he had ever seen. Thomas described himself as six feet two and a very muscular 190 pounds with thick red hair. He told Jesse about the scars on his left shoulder from being shot in combat and that he was a black belt in karate. He sent a photo of himself from boot camp and she was equally taken with him. Before long, Thomas was wishing the day away at work so he could get home, jump online, and talk to Jesse. He couldn't get her out of his mind. All day at work, he wondered what she was doing. When they got to speak at night, she told him stories about how she was a softball star at her school and her plans after graduation. Thomas told her all kinds of exciting stories from his deployments. Jesse continued sending him pictures and started referring to him as her Tommy. They then began speaking on the phone at least twice a day and chatting online every night until the sun came up. After a month of speaking almost daily, the pair started exchanging I love yous. It also didn't take long for the conversations to turn extremely sexual. Most nights they stayed up describing in graphic detail exactly how their first time would be. Jesse and Tommy started sending each other gifts, and one day Tommy opened an envelope to find a pair of Jesse's underwear inside. Tommy kept every gift and every note she ever sent him in a box in his closet. He couldn't bear to throw anything of hers away. Tommy's time online talking to Jesse was like a drug, so he was extremely upset when it was time for him to deploy. He even alluded to the fact that he was having very dark, depressive thoughts and even thoughts of harming himself. Jesse begged him to be strong and hurry back to her. While Tommy was gone, his father, Thomas Sr., got online and reached out to Jesse. He told her that he didn't approve of the relationship and that it was moving way too fast. He didn't like how consumed and distracted his son had become, and he continuously tried to persuade Jesse to end it. When Tommy returned from Iraq months later and Jesse told him about his father messaging her, he was furious, and instead of dialing things back, the two began talking about a future together and even discussing marriage. Their relationship wasn't without its pitfalls, however. Tommy had a nasty jealous streak and a temper to go with it. On her part, Jesse could sometimes come across as evasive and dishonest. She would send him videos set to music with a montage of provocative pics, posing in tiny bikinis or from her job as a lifeguard, and Tommy couldn't shake the feeling that she was sending these pre-made videos to other guys. He would frequently get angry and accuse her of talking and sending pics to other men online, but she would always vehemently deny his accusations. He found himself constantly checking to see if she was online and closely monitoring her MySpace account. When he would get these suspicions, he would let out a tirade of demeaning insults, belittling her and calling her all kinds of awful names. After one of their particularly nasty fights, Jesse sent him a silver chain with a key to her heart. In an effort to apologize, Tommy sent her her favorite pink roses in return. 
In late December 2005, less than a year after their first conversation, and despite not getting to meet in person yet, Tommy asked Jesse to marry him, and Jesse excitedly accepted. Tommy wrote long letters to her professing his love and confiding in her that he had never felt this way in his entire life. He wrote her that he couldn't wait to move to West Virginia so they could begin their lives together. At this point, they were regularly exchanging pictures, sending gifts to each other, and almost all of their conversations were extremely sexual. Even Tommy's coworkers at the plant noticed a marked change in him and noticed that he was completely checked out the whole day at work. They also noticed that he always seemed sleep deprived and was becoming extremely edgy and more difficult to get along with. Thomas's relationship with Jesse had become an all consuming obsession for him. In February 2006, Jesse was expecting one of Tommy's love letters and hurried outside in the chilly, damp weather to check the mailbox. She saw an envelope addressed to her, excitedly tore into it, and what she read shocked her to her core. With her mind reeling and her hands trembling uncontrollably, she struggled to process the words on the page in front of her. A photo of a couple in their mid-40s with two preteen girls was tucked into the creases of the letter and fell out into her hands. The letter read as follows. Dear Jesse, let me introduce you to these people. The man in the center is Tom, my husband, since 1989. He's 46 years old. From what I'm pulling from your letters, you're much closer to my daughter's age than mine, let alone Tom's. Are you even 18? In this alone, he could be prosecuted as a child predator. Do not trust words on a computer. Let this go. You will only be hurt by a man who has mastered the art of manipulations and lies. Sincerely, Cindy Montgomery. As Jessie read the letter over and over and studied the photo, she felt sick. The Tommy she had spent so many hours each day chatting and making future plans with didn't even exist. In her grief, she fired off a text to Thomas asking if what the letter said was true. She texted him that it was over between the two of them and that he should go to jail for having a relationship with a 17-year-old. She then jumped online, tracking down one of Thomas's friends and coworkers, 22-year-old Brian Barrett, who went by the username Beefcake1572 and asked if it was true that she'd been manipulated and duped into believing Tommy was an 18-year-old Marine. Brian confirmed that everything in Cindy's letter was true and that Thomas was a 46-year-old married father of two who made power tool parts for a living. She also learned that Thomas had been telling everyone at work that he planned to leave his wife for Jesse. Jesse's heartbreak turned to rage and bitterness. She felt betrayed and foolish for having believed all of Tom's lies. She decided she was going to get her revenge. Jesse began leaning on Thomas's coworker Brian for comfort, and soon the two became more than friends. At 22 years old, Brian was much closer to Jesse's age, and besides that, he was much kinder and much more of an easy and fun-loving person in general. Brian was a college student and aspired to be an industrial arts teacher. Brian was very well liked and had an infectious smile. Brian and Jesse began talking daily and the relationship heated up quickly. Meanwhile, Thomas Montgomery's life was falling apart. Thomas's wife, Cindy, had noticed a change in her husband of 16 years for months. Normally a very attentive and devoted father, he had begun ignoring his family and spent every waking minute on their family computer. Thomas taught Sunday school and helped coach his daughters on the swim team when he wasn't clocking long hours at work. Unlike his description to Jesse, Thomas was tall, but he had a mustache, his hair was receding, and he had put on a beer belly since his days in the Marines. The pictures that he had sent to Jesse were 30 years old. There were no scars from his time in the Marines, and he was never a sniper. Everything that Thomas had told Jesse was a lie. Noticing Thomas's drastically altered behavior, Cindy Montgomery began snooping around looking for evidence of what was going on. As she was rifling through her husband's belongings in his closet one afternoon, she stumbled upon the box of Jesse's love letters, photos, 
and even her underwear. When she saw that Jessie was barely 18, Cindy, being the mother of two girls herself, felt her maternal instincts kick in and knew that she had to write Jessie and warn her. Jessie was determined to make Thomas pay. She and Brian began trashing Thomas on open forums and telling everyone that he was a pervert, a predator, and into underage girls. Jessie gave Brian her passwords and he would log into her accounts and start up conversations with Thomas, pretending to be Jessie, just to humiliate him. Brian would then show the conversations to everyone at work. He would also discuss the relationship when Thomas was in earshot. Thomas was in a complete downward spiral and seething with the jealousy and rage. Jesse and Brian also got Thomas suspended from their online gaming room. His fellow co-workers naturally started treating him differently and he was asked to step down from helping his daughters on the swim team. Thomas started complaining at work that his wife Cindy had sent him down to live in the basement while they decided if they could work things out in their marriage. She also restricted his computer time and forbid him from speaking to Jesse ever again. To add to the humiliation, both of his own teenage daughters knew what he had done. During his relationship with Jesse, Thomas had begun to lose touch with reality and had come to actually believe that he was the reinvented young Tommy. He was no longer interested in his old identity, in his dead-end job, troubled marriage, and his monotonous day-to-day -day life clocking in and out of a factory. He started to become more and more unhinged. He was still completely obsessed with Jessie and he missed talking to her every day. He felt cold and dead inside. Without her, not much else really mattered to him anymore. As angry as she was, Jessie couldn't fully let go of Tommy either. Even though she was talking to Brian, she began sending Thomas flirtatious messages again. Many of Thomas's responses were cold and vicious as he was enraged over her relationship with Brian. He couldn't handle the thought of the two meeting up in person, making love, or having any type of physical contact. Despite lying to Jesse about who he was for months, Thomas continued guilting her about being a liar and a cheat and started ordering her to dump Brian. Jesse seemed to almost enjoy and thrive off of the drama between Thomas and Brian. She would pass messages between the two, escalating the fighting. She was telling both men at the same time that she didn't want the other one and she only wanted to be with them. Then she would sit back and enjoy the fireworks that ensued. It became very obvious to the other people watching this whole scenario play out that Jesse was loving the two men fighting over her. With tensions between Brian and Thomas rising, it inevitably spilled over into their workplace. Their coworkers at the manufacturing plant were becoming increasingly nervous, noticing how angry and unstable Thomas Montgomery had become. One of his coworkers jokingly wore a bulletproof vest to his shift one day, joking that Tom was acting like he was going to go postal. It was evident to everyone that he was a ticking time bomb. Thomas started telling Jesse that if she didn't give him his way, he would post her address and pictures all over the internet so that any man could come find her. He also began threatening violence against Brian. Despite all of this, Jesse continued telling Thomas that she still loved him and that she was going to end her relationship with Brian very soon. Everything came to a head in September of 2006. At home, Thomas appeared to be going through the motions of trying to fix his marriage, but in reality, all he wanted was to get Brian Barrett out of Jesse's life for good. On September 13th, Jesse and Thomas got into an explosive fight over IM. She had been telling Thomas that she still deeply cared about him and that she was breaking up with Brian for the past six months. Thomas had run out of patience. He overheard Brian telling the guys at work that he planned on going to West Virginia the following weekend to meet Jesse in person and that the two were finally going to get the chance to hook up. This news sent Thomas completely over the edge. To top it off, Jesse had finally become tired of listening to Thomas's constant threats and verbal abuse. She had stopped responding to him for the first time since he met her. On Friday, September 15th, Thomas continued his onslaught of nasty messages to Jesse, but all of his goading was met with silence. 
Later that night, when Brian got off of his shift at 10.06 p.m., he was tired and looking forward to going home. He walked across the dark, empty parking lot and got into his white pickup truck. As he reached for the seatbelt, three bullets pierced through the driver's side window, entering his upper arm and his neck. 22-year-old Brian Barrett slumped over in his seat and then died in his truck. Unfortunately, since it was the weekend, no one noticed him until an employee took his kid to practice driving in the parking lot the next afternoon. When the police arrived and started asking questions, all fingers pointed to Thomas Montgomery almost immediately. His coworkers filled the cops in on all of the tension between the two, and one person reported that Montgomery had actually threatened to shoot someone and then later asked that same employee when Brian got off work. When investigators found out that the two men were fighting over Jessie, they became very concerned for her safety and decided that they had to get cops in her area over to her house immediately. One of the officers found her number in Brian's phone and called her. He told her the situation and made sure she'd be home the next day to speak with investigators. Jessie assured him that she would. The following day, investigators from West Virginia pulled up to Jessie's home in Oakville. Jesse's mother, Mary, opened the door and advised the officers that Jesse wasn't home and that she had no way to reach her. Confused, the officers asked Mary why Jesse wasn't there after they had just confirmed that she would be a few hours ago. Mary's behavior seemed off. She nervously shifted her weight and seemed to stumble on her words. The officers looked at each other and immediately picked up on it and continued to press Mary about Jesse's whereabouts. Finally, Mary cracked and left investigators stunned. It wasn't Jesse who the men had been fighting over this entire time. It was Jesse's mother, Mary. Mary had been using her daughter Jesse's photos to catfish multiple men online for no other reason than boredom. Mary told the officers that she was happily married for 23 years and wasn't really sure why she liked to play games with men online. Her daughter, Jessie, knew nothing about it. What was even more disturbing was it was Mary taking the pictures of Jessie, having her pose in swimsuits, taking her underwear to send to random strangers online, and even one incident where she snuck a camera under her daughter's skirt to send a video to a stranger that she had met in a chat room. Back in New York, investigators sat down with Thomas Montgomery to question him about Brian's murder. Thomas maintained his innocence, even giving himself an alibi, which his wife, Cindy Montgomery, quickly shot down. Investigators had found a peach pit, which later tested positive for Montgomery's DNA next to Brian's truck. They also found a leather cartridge case with dog hairs that they hypothesized belonged to the Montgomery's dog, Shadow. When officers searched the house, they found all of the love letters, the photos, and of course, Jesse's G-strings. If that wasn't enough, Brian had been murdered with a 30 caliber rifle. The same exact rifle that happened to be missing from the Montgomery's gun cabinet. Investigators watched Thomas's face change to absolute shock as they told him that he had actually been talking to Jesse's 45 year old mother, Mary, this entire time. There had never been a relationship with Jesse. Thomas had destroyed everything in his life and Brian had lost his life over the online games of a bored housewife. Not only that, but Thomas and Brian were only two of many men that Mary had been toying with online. She never cared for either one of them. Everything had been a game. Thomas Montgomery was arrested on November 27, 2006 and charged with Brian Barrett's murder. Thomas ended up taking a plea deal that he later tried to renege and pled guilty to first degree manslaughter he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. According to the most recent information I could find, Cindy divorced him and his daughters have nothing to do with him. They stopped visiting him shortly after he went to prison. Prosecutors in New York diligently searched for a reason to charge Mary Sheeler, but ultimately could find no law that she had broken. However, despite their extremely close relationship, it's widely reported that Jesse cut her mother off, moved out of state, and never spoke to her again. Mary's husband filed for divorce. Mary has never apologized to Jesse for anything that she's done and has never shown any remorse over the situation. 
She's rumored to be writing a book about the dangers of being online. Be sure to check that one out. Brian Barrett's parents tried to get laws enacted in New York that would have made Mary Sheeler's actions illegal. They've spent their time since Brian's death fighting for stricter internet laws. When investigators searched his work locker, they found an extremely unsettling note that Thomas had written to himself. It read, On January 2, 2006, Tom Montgomery, 46 years old, ceases to exist and is replaced by an 18-year-old battle-scarred Marine. He's moving to West Virginia to be with the love of his life. The assistant DA who prosecuted this case postulated on how disturbing it was that a seemingly well-adjusted husband and father could slip into such a dark fantasy world over a few months of talking to a complete stranger online. 